Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is creating turning tools. So we covered in a previous video in these training video series of um, the toolkit formats and settings. In this video will focus specifically on turning tools. So first thing to note about the toolkit is that it's not distinguishing between milling and turning tools. Essentially, if you go to tools, solid cam, toolkit, new tool library, it only says tool components, assemblies, machine tool setup. We covered those file formats in the first video of this series, but it doesn't actually distinguish between milling and turning. So when you go into the component library, you tell it what type of tool you'd like to create. So today we'll be making turning tools. And when you click on turning tools, all you have to define here are inserts, and some solid tool shapes here for boring bars and such. And that's because in the component library, you're looking at making just the individual components that later you will assign as assemblies. So here we would actually add a insert to the cutters uh, folder, and then we would add the shank to the shank folder. And then later we will assemble these together. So in terms of the turning, you have profile, groove, and thread inserts, and then you have the rest of the shapes here for the different functions. But even if you select just the one profile, you have the ability here to switch it to whatever shape you need it to be. So in this case, I can switch it automatically to the external roughing tool, or I can leave it as an insert, and then I'll combine that later with the shank. Even with this, you can still define the default insert. So let's say we make something simple, simple here. We'll just go to make a CNMG 432. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to each pull-down menu and defining the insert by these different parameters. Okay, and as you can see, it builds a CNMG 432. It's a very simple, solid representation of it, but this is enough to get the toolpath to, to, uh, to generate. And Specifically for this insert, if I added this to a shank, if I wanted to define fees and speeds, I can go over to this section right here, the cutting conditions, and I can add those fees and speeds. Again, these fees and speeds are for the definition of the tool. When you actually add this tool to a tool path, to an operation in your CAM part, these will just import these fees and speeds, fees and, speeds and uh, place them in the operation manager. But once in the operation manager, you can adjust the fees and speeds to the actual operation and the material that you're machining, or in this case, turning. Um, now, for the individual cutters, this is the parameter data. You just plug it in, and it gives you the general shape of the insert. But let's say you had a custom insert, or you got a solid model from your tooling supplier. Well, those models can be used if you switch the shape type to 3D model. And now you see the only information it's asking for is the actual model itself. So if I just browse to that location, defaulted in my SolidCam settings, I can go and I can grab insert file and what it does is it brings it in and it converts it into something that can be usable in the toolkit in this case there is my insert and you can see it has some nice facets in there it is a proper representation of that insert take note of the fact that the coordinate system is bottom center of the insert that's because when i go to use this insert in my assembly i want that to place the insert relative to that coordinate system to the joint of the holder that I'm holding it in. Speaking of joints and putting it in shanks and holders, let's take a look at the shank. So in terms of the shank, again, you have the ability here to choose the different shank types, but if we go over here, that's really just represented here as well. So in this case, I can tell it whatever type of shank type I'm looking for. So in this case, instead of profile, I can set it to a groove, or I can set it to a thread. Let's just go with the profile style shank. Again, pull down menus under the parameter data, allows me to plug in the specific dimensions of this end mill, or of this, uh, this shank. Again, it's very similar to what we saw in the previous video with, with milling. All of this is driven by the parameter data. In the parameter data section, you plug in whatever information you're looking for, and then it generates the shank. If we take a look at the connection data, which you'll find when you're defining shanks and adapters and holders, you have a mounting point and a joint. Whereas with the profile, all you have is a mounting point. It really doesn't even define it here because when I defined the solid, I defined what the mounting point should be. How to define the point for a solid will be covered in a future video. For the shank, 
when I defined this, well, basically this being a default shank, it put it in this back corner here. But I have the ability to move that around under mounting. So if this should actually be offset from a particular mounting point, I can control that here. Or if I actually define this using my own 3D model, I will actually define what that coordinate system, where that coordinate system sits on my shank, and I can mount it myself still under zero, zero. Let's go back over here, and let's just bring that solid back on screen. So the mounting point is where this shank sits in the holder in the assembly. So obviously this shank is not floating in space. I will probably add some sort of a holder to hold this shank, and the shank holds the insert. So again, it's a very much of a top-down assembly style. And we'll take a look at that when we get to the tool assemblies page. But here, when we're defining the shank, we define the mounting, and we define a joint. And the joint is actually what will hold the insert. So if you think back to that, that profile insert, if you take a look at the y-axis as the center axis, and x and z are a certain direction, those will line up with this joint when we assemble them. So the y-axis is in that direction, the x and the z are in those directions. So whenever you define a shank, you're defining both the mounting and the joint. Think of it as the holder of the insert. So you're really just telling it where the holder sits on the turret and where the insert sits on the shank. Let's get out of here. And let's take a look at a library that I've already created. So I'm gonna to go to Tool Assemblies. So as soon as I open up the Edit Tool Library, it's asking me where, what tool library I'd like to open. I'm just gonna open up one of my libraries here and we'll take a look at a tool. Now, in terms of assemblies, when you first open up a default assembly file, tool assembly file, outside of a CAM part, it's not really referencing the stations of your machine. But if you open up the tool assemblies library inside of a CAM part file, it will reference the VMID of your post, and it'll show you how many stations you actually have to put tools into. So this is kind of just a generic library, but if you are inside of a CAM part file, it knows which stations you have. So all you would have to do is again, either add tools by dragging and dropping, and then you can tell it what shank you'd like to put on top of that. So again, let's just grab the default shank. If I add it to the tool, then the profile insert and the shank are both mounted in the same position. And that doesn't make any sense. Those two should not be side by side. The profile insert sits on the shank. It's in, inside the shank, it's mounted to the shank. So I have to drag and drop it on top, and then it places the insert in the proper location. So in this case, that default insert is mounted like we saw previously, and that NP right there is actually the cutting point. So if we take a look at that, that red dot is the cutting point. So that would be the reference point for my turning toolpaths. So when you bring it into a tool assembly, you actually bring in the different components. You can either build it here, or we can browse to other tool libraries, other tool component libraries, or tool assembly libraries to bring it into this library. So again, you have the ability to cherry pick between the different libraries. But in the assembly file, what you're actually looking to do is make sure you're in, in advanced view, and then you can actually see all the details of all your tools. For instance, let's take a look at this predetermined tool that I had here. So tool one is a mini turret, holding those three tools. Now they happen to all be different tools, but they are all mounted at the different joints. So if I click on the mini turret, click on the connection section, I have that mounted at the top center of that turret, that guy right there. And I have three joints that I have defined for that solid. So we take a look at the definition of that solid. I use the 3D model and I browsed to an STL that I created somewhere else. Again, we're gonna cover that in another video in this series. But by defining that solid with those three coordinate systems, and then coming in here and defining those three coordinate systems as different joints, as soon as I drag and drop a tool into that turret, it locks right into those positions. And each of those is at a different angle as well. So you define the position as well as the rotary angle. And then when you go to actually use this as a, uh, as a tool, let's say we go to this first one here, the external turning. If you click on the overview, you see that this is 
uh, tool one, one. This one is tool one, two. And then this one is tool one, three. So each of these are are going to be called out differently in the G code, but this gives you the ability for one tool to, to have all three tools mounted, or in the case of a tool facing the main and the sub, two tools. Uh, or if this is a special holder that holds the tool at a certain angle, again, if that joint is defined as being at an angle, then it'll hold the tool at an angle. Notice the top-down workflow. So tool one is holding, or at least station one, is holding the mini turret at its mounting point which has three joints. And then when I drag and drop those, ins those, uh, those shanks to the mini turret, this indent indicates that they are sitting in the mini turret. So they lock into joint one. So if I click on this, we'll go to the connection section. That one's at joint one. That one is at joint two. And that one is at joint three. So the purpose of the tool assembly is you grab your predefined tool components, and then when you drag them onto whatever holder or shank you're defining, they lock into the joint of that holder. So again, very top down. And each of those have their own inserts, which are also mounted at the joints of those individual shanks. So this one is at the joint one of that shank. So if I click on that shank, it also had its own joint joint one, each of these have their own joint one, and then each of these have their own cutting point as well. One other thing to note is even still looking at this top down, you can see there's a cutting point. So let's take a look at the one of the groove because the groove is the most telling. So if we take a look at the groove inserts cutting point, I actually have the ability to add multiple cutting points. So for instance, this grooving insert it's defined as a cutting point on that side. But if I right click here and say add cutting point, I can add it to whatever radius is on the insert. So if I'll just click on this box here and say use radius two, I've added a second cutting point using the radius from that solid. It reads that there's a corner rad on that solid. Otherwise, by checking this box, I could still use radius one, but then I could shift it in the X and the Z position any way I want. So if I were intending to use maybe the center or if this was a round insert, maybe somewhere else on the insert, you have the ability to modify that cutting position as well. And that will modify the tool path and give you a different offset if you need it as well. So there's full custom ability inside of the, uh, the toolkit. So any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-115-2 and stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.